there is a need. Okay, we are going to be recording this okay. to make it available. Again, thanks everyone for coming out. My name is Steve Watkins, the elementary math coach. Um, I, I really appreciate that and I'm excited that you're here. I, I'm excited that you're here to really support your child. And I have Blanca Morales, our uh, professional development specialist here to uh, work alongside with me. So thank you, Blanca. No problem. Hello, everybody. All right, tonight you're here for um, Math fluency, so Parent Institute for Elementary Parents and how to support your child with math fluency. So we're gonna talk about that. I have a few people here so we can have time for a lot more questions as needed. Um, I can go slow. All right, so let's just dive right in. Sorry, Don. All right, so this is our uh, Queen Creek uh, vision and mission. I wanna just focus on the mission. Queen Creek Unified School District empowers each student to achieve excellence in all pursuits and lead with integrity. That's why we're here. We want, we want to have our students, we want to empower our students to achieve excellence. And that, yes, that's in all parts. That's with math fluency as well. And I want to empower each student. We're going to do our part here. You're here to have that partnership with us. So you're going to be partnering with us to empower them at home. In order to do that, to empower them at home, I want to empower you tonight and walk away with them. I thought about giving you a time test. On nines, tens, elevens, and twelves for fluency multiplication, but I want you to memorize this number. Take a few moments. All right, Blanca. Next slide. Seriously, stop and memorize it, okay? All right, you want to look? Hey, how's it going? Hi. You just got here. You just got here in time for our memorization. Really? <laughs> Welcome. Tell me where, uh, what school are you representing tonight? Hi, Peter. Hey, Peter. All right, welcome. My name's Steve. Hi. <laughs> this is Blanca. Hi. Yeah. All right. All right. Time's up for memorizing it. We're going to have a quiz in just a moment on fluency of that. All right. All right. So, what to expect tonight? So, just an overview. Um, we're going to talk about grade level fluency expectations according to the standards. Um, what is fluency? So, the idea of being fluent and flexible. Talk about the importance of making connections. You have hand out as well. Oh. This as well, if you want to follow along with this. Making different connections to help us get complex. Then after that, we're going to look at a variety of different games. And that's what I want you to take home. These, we have different handouts and stuff for you to take. And those are the, the games that's going to empower you to be a little bit more involved to help build this fluency. All right? So here's our grade level required fluency in kindergarten. The, the expectation is that they can add and subtract within five. Now they're working on the count past that, but they want to be fluent and quick with that. First grade, add and subtract within 10. So we, we can see how it builds. Second grade, add and subtract within 20. And then add and subtract within 100 using pencil and paper. That's more of the algorithm. We're getting into some of the computation. More or less, tonight is not made for doing the pencil and paper work. What we have traditionally considered mastering the facts, correct? Third grade, that's your multiplication facts, multiplying and divide within 100. That's where our multiplication facts come okay. in. We also have uh, other uh, grade level standards. We're not going to address these so much because these are the byproduct of being successful with that facts. I can add and subtract within 1 million, so it's very hard to have activities that are going to support you with adding and subtract. It's when you know your facts that these other strategies and procedures are going to become a lot easier. Same with fifth grade, uh, multi-digit multiplication, and sixth grade, multi-digit division, multi-digit operations with decimals. So again, tonight's um, focus is on empowering you to support your children with math facts. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. So what is fluency? Take a moment just to read that over. What is fluency? The word fluent is used in the standards to mean fast and accurate. Okay, that's, that's why we had our time test growing up. We turn the paper over, do as much as you can in two minutes. A lot of anxiety built into that, right? Fluency in each grade level involves a mixture of just knowing some answers, knowing some answers from patterns, and knowing some answers from using the use of strategies. This is not a matter of 
spilling facts divorced from their meetings, but rather as an outcome of multi-year process. I like that multi-year process. We saw that in the building of the standards. Add and subtract within five, add and subtract within 10, add and subtract within 20. We're building on that. So each grade level has their own expectations. So this multi-year process that heavily involves the interplay of practice and reasoning, not just memorization. And this is one of the, uh, the ladies I follow, a great blog and thinker of math professional development, Christina Tombewald, if I'm saying that correctly. So a uh, great uh, place to turn to, mostly for uh, teaching math. So you're hearing me talk about being fluent and then flexible. Hi, right, Owen. Hi. So we're going to talk about being fluent and flexible. The word fluent is used in the standard standing fast and accurate and flexible. Being flexible refers to use, a, use various strategies to get the answer. So let's take a look at this language example of being flexible. I could say that I've lost my marbles. Maybe that's easy to do. If I'm rigid in my thinking with this language example of I've lost my marbles, I know that I'm looking around for a bag of marbles that I've literally misplaced. However, if I'm flexible with my thinking, I know that it means I'm losing my mind, I'm going crazy. However, just the same in math, I need to have multiple meaning or multiple approaches to understanding math. And that's what our focus is on going to be on tonight. Did you guys memorize this? You have it? All right, does anybody want to volunteer? If I turn the other, other way of the room, we'll give you a test. If you have it, go ahead, Paul. How'd you do that? I grew up memorizing. You grew up memorizing? It just, that's, that's really good. Fast. That's really good. That's impressive. <laughs> but, but not everyone can do that. For, it's forced memorization. It's forced memorization. I think. You couldn't do it. So we're gonna, we're talking about making connections. I know you just walked in. I appreciate you coming. That's okay. Sorry. Oh, don't be. Don't <laughs> be. Horrible today. That's what we were talking about earlier. <sighs> let's let's take a look at the next slide. So I want you to write down three things that you notice about these numbers now. Take a moment to look at them. While you memorize them, would you go home and remember it there? No. I'll remember it now. You'll remember it now. All right. So here's three things that I noticed. I noticed that the first one starts with two. I'm making a connection. Then they increase by three every time. That's the second thing that I notice. And then the last one ends with two and zero. So again, I'm seeing that two. So now, that I have these connections with them, could someone else be willing to try to say that? <laughs> so it would be 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, and 20. I get a little nervous on camera, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, we want to have connections. This is just a little example of why we need to have connections. This is a silly example because we're not going to ask a student to memorize an 11 digit num number. But the importance leads to my next few slides about making connections. Fluent and flexible. The next slides are going to show various ways people make connections to the expression 6 plus 7. The more ways we make connections with the expression, the more flexible, just like that language, language, language example, the more flexible we are with our understanding. So here's our example, six plus seven. Most of us are just gonna say 13. That's memorization in some, some ways. Six plus seven, got that map, got that flashcard, six plus seven. Six plus seven again is 13. I'm just drilling and killing it, taking all the fun out of it. So let's take a look at some other examples. We were talking a little bit about the standards and some of the properties that we probably, they've been around, but we were presented, when we were at school, we were presented them in different ways. I see six plus seven, here's our original one, but the, I, the uh, commutative property says I can go seven plus six. 
And the benefit of that is I can start with a larger add-in. Well, now I'm not counting seven more, I'm counting six more, so it's a little bit more efficient, isn't it? Especially if I'm going seven plus 12, I can go 12 plus seven. I can understand that I'm having the same numbers. And the progression with students, they start with this, this example up top. They start like this, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, you get it. And then they do seven more. That's not efficient or flowing, we would say, correct? But that's their first connection that they make. Again, the more connections that we have, the more flexible and fluent they're gonna be. Yes, ma'am? I'm not quite sure. I think there are some people on this. Is there any questions so far? Any questions online, Martha? Anna, do you have any questions? No, I'm fine. Thank You're you. Great. All right, let's take a look at one more slide, please. So here we have pictorial slides that we can also make these connections. This is a 10 frame. So we see 10 frame. This is called a record rec, unit fixed cubes. So I can use those to help my child make connections. Tonight, this is not to overwhelm you with all the different connections. It's showing you the power of making connections. In the classroom, we're going to do a lot of these strategies. I want you to probably focus in empowering your students at home with a lot of these pictorials and these activities that are that's going to support the fluency needs. Okay. Other strategies. We won't talk too much about those, but different connections. Let's get into the fun part, the activities, correct? Your girls mind if I, is it okay if they volunteer to help me out? Yeah. All right. The first strategy is how many hiding, and this is more of a kindergarten to first grade activity. Okay? So in this activity, the child has the same number of pennies and a cup, and tonight we're going to use just unifix cubes. So you can use beans, anything that you have at home. They take turns hiding some of their pennies in the cup and showing the leftovers. Other children work out the answer to the question, how many are hiding, and say the full number combination. Example, I have 10 pennies and I decide to hide seven in my cup. My group can see that I only have three pennies. Students should be able to say, I'm hiding seven pennies and that three and seven make 10. Are you ready to help me out? All right, come on up, what's your name? All right, Anna. How are you, Mr. Watkins? All right. I have this here. We're going to play how many are hiding, okay? How many do I have here? Ten. Okay. Close your eyes. Are you really closing? I'm just going to use a bowl. All right, take a look now. How many are we supposed to have? Ten. How many are hiding? Seven. Seven? All right, let's try it again. How many, how, how many do we have? How many do we have? Five. And then six, Ten. seven, eight. Two. How many are hiding? Two. Two. Check it out. Were you correct? All right. So let's say that. How many do we have here? And then two make... Ten. Ten. Let's take a look at that. Thanks. Yeah. With this activity, there's some different things that you can do. With this this activity, a good way to bridge that gap of the concrete to the abstract. I have ten. Part of it is showing. What's the other part that's missing? This is thing, these are strategies and representations that they see in the classroom. This is called a number bond. So we know that this is going to be two. Here's part of my number, here's the other part of my number, here's the whole thing. So you can do that on a sheet of paper as well to help support them with that fluency. The other representation is this one here. This is called a park or whole model as well. Here's my whole 10. The larger portion of 10 is 8, and I can put that question mark, excuse me, I can put that question mark there, 
and I can count on one, two to get the 10. So same things that you're doing with the blocks that you can do at the same time that you're playing. How many, how many are you hiding? Okay. All right, let's take a look at our next game, our activity. You like that one? This one is Go Fish. My daughter and I play this one a lot at home with a deck of cards. So first of all, I wanted my activities to be with simple things that you already have at home. Hopefully you have decks of cards, you have dice. Like I said, pennies, Legos, for how many you're hiding, things of that nature, things that you have at home, keeping it simple. So this one again is go fish. Instead of making pairs, we're making again, number combinations to make a 10. Remember first grade, that was the big expectation with fluency is adding, subtracting within 10. Kindergarten was number, number combinations to so five. If you're wanting to work just with five, change your deck up. If you're wanting to do, uh, take out the face cards, feel free to do that at home. So here's how it works. This is what I have, this is what I have, and I'm asking someone, do you have a seven? Because I'm wanting to make that number combination, okay? No go fish, and then I pick up a card. Wonka, do you wanna model that one? Sure. Absolutely. Or do you wanna model it with you? Yeah, me? let's have. All right, more face. All right, Blanca. All right. But again, I, I played this one with my daughter all last summer. Just gonna give her a few cards. And then I'm, again, I'm making tens. So I have a nine, everyone. So everybody in the audience, what do I need to make a 10? One. All right, so I'm going to ask Blanca. Blanca, do you have a one? Go fish. Go fish. Okay, Blanca? Um, I actually can make a 10. You made a 10, so you can have, put your pairs down or your partners. I have an eight, and I have a two. So if Perfect. I add like two to the eight, it makes 10. Perfect. And she still gets to go. She hasn't asked me yet. <laughs> go ahead. Do you have a one? Okay. And that's how the game works. You can put them down and just have a friendly competition. And, and the, the, the best thing about using cards, they have something to count on, yeah. right? We've been afraid for a long time to like count on. We consider this a tool now, right? So it's effective, but not always efficient. We run out of fingers and toes, but it gets them started. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another one. This one's a simple game that you can use. Yeah, go ahead. If you were to go from, sorry, could you do that with multiplication, division, for like some of these? Well, you, you have it here more as multiplication. Yeah. On those fish. Uh, it's possible I'd have to consider it, like what's your target. Um, is like you have only a limited amount of factors for that. Right. Whereas this one, it's just you're because you're typically in Go Fish bringing two cards together, certain things. It's a little bit harder, a little bit more restricted. On this one, on more, I'll, I'll talk about that. Good, excellent question. Excellent question. So on in War, this is a game that we've always played again. So if two people are playing the card game, turn over a card, which one's the largest? So here we're working on greater and lesser. Here they want. My opinion is greater than any, is better than any worksheet. That I, I'm just having fun with them, reinforcing everything that they're doing in school. You can decide to take the face cards out or not. So here, I'm doing addition with two add-ins, okay? One person has nine and one, they have 10. The other person, their two add-ins is nine and seven, so I have 16. Who gets the cards? The person with nine and 16. You can do that with three add-ins, five, six, and seven. 
Add those up. You can change it up. You can do subtracting. I, when I was in the classroom, I used lore for it for a lot of different things. Hey, I'm pulling a small group in the back. You guys are playing this this activity. So here, we want the smaller. We want the smallest difference. I have six minus five and nine minus five. So this time, the person with the, the less number wins. So we can change it up so to, to work with that different form. Multiplication, Paul, you were asking about this, correct? Mm -hmm. So just like with the addition, take two cards, and this time we're multiplying. And we're comparing that value at the end. So here I have seven times seven, 49. And here I have three times six. Who wins? So again, just different varieties of doing this activity. Many different, same activity, just changed up for where they are with building which fluency facts. Right. Questions online? Anna, any questions? No, no, I like the word, yeah. Perfect, thank you. All right, again, this is another activity I, I've done with my daughter, first-hand experience with my third grader. And I, I use them all the time in the classroom, but again, Saves paper, I didn't have to make a whole lot of copies and just bring out the decks of cards. Okay. This, one's, uh, this one's called How Close to 100. Everybody has a handout for that. I want that you share these online. This is How Close to 100. Take a pair of dice. Feel free to take a pair of dice. And here's how we're going to play this one. All close to 100, this game is played in partners. Two children share a blank 100 grid that you have. I have plenty of copies. If you want to take extra home, feel free to do so, so that you can play this activity. It's also great to put in a page protector and use with a dry erase marker if you're not wanting to make copies over and over. All right, the numbers that come up are the numbers that the child uses to make an array on a 100 grid. This goes back to how they're making connections. I'm showing this array, and that's what multiplication is. They can put the array anywhere on the grid, but the goal is to fill up the grid to get it as full as possible. After the player draws the array on the grid, she writes the number sentence that describes the grid. Number sentence is another word for equation. The game ends when both players have rolled the dice and cannot put any more arrays on the grid. How close to 100 did you get? All right, so here's what it looks like. I'm gonna roll my dice. I have one and a six, so I'm gonna go to my paper here. I go one, down one, and over six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my array, it's an array. So here, I'm gonna write my first one. One times six. And I have six. Partner two would go. They have two times six. And there's strategy involved. There's two times six. All right? You can simply you can modify this game slightly. If you wanted to, here they're working together to see how close they can get. If you have some competitive, friendly competition, who covered more of the area, who covered less of the area? Because strategy comes into play. You put in the center, you've got less places to go after this. And you can have this little competition of who's covered. And still reinforcing the array and the number sent to the equation. I'm going to show one more activity. I'll give you guys time to practice, and I'll have time for questions. But let's take a look at the next activity. This one's called Pig, and you have this sheet as well. I'm going to take this sheet, and again, plenty of copies of that one. All right, this is Pig. You'll need, again, two dice and paper and pencil. The goal is to bank 100 points for addition or a thousand points if you're doing multiplication. Again, you can modify this game easily. If you want to work on addition, you can modify it to a thousand points. 
if you're working on multiplication. So here's how it looks. Roll as many times as you would like, but that's the risk. There's some risk involved. You can bank your points and then the other player may go. However, if you roll a one, you lose your unbanked points. If you roll double ones, you lose everything in your bank and you start over. So here's how it works. I've got mine up here. I'm gonna roll here. I've got two plus six. I can either write the uh, expression here or I'm just gonna add it. I have eight. I'm gonna go again. I have four plus two, I have six. I'm feeling a little greedy tonight. I'm gonna keep going. Two plus four is eight. Thank you. <laughs> I was multiplying. <laughs> And I rolled a one. So what happens? I lose everything. Now, I could have stopped. I could have stopped with 86. And I could have put that in my bank. Right. Next player goes since I rolled a one. They're working on it. They're working on it. Back to my turn. I rolled two ones. What happens? I have to start over. That's called pig. Don't let yourself become a selfish pig. <laughs> All right? I played this in a professional development with teachers. It was a blast. The risk involved, you, you forget you're doing the work. So there's a lot of fun with this. It's uh, probably one of my favorites for uh, just simple uh, addition. The multiplication, it would just been uh, two times four is eight. That's what I was doing in my head. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> And, and, and so I'm a little bit uh, higher. What happens then is you're putting all of your products here. You're still working on that addition to get here. All right. I'll give you a few moments. Practice the games. I'm going to walk around to see uh, how you're doing. You have cards. You have dice and the other activities. Any questions online? Yeah, I'm going to check in with Anna. Anna, any questions for our math coach? Um. No. The grid wasn't quite clear for me. The the grid? Yeah. Okay. Um mm -hmm. if and I put some I put some resources in the comments. If you want to click okay. on comment, um, one of the one of the links is gonna take you to this presentation. You can just play this uh, let's see. And then the other one is gonna give you um, the templates to how close to a hundred. Okay. Yeah, I have, I printed out those. Okay. Um, so I'll have, I'll have Steve kind of walk you through it because he's the expert here. Um, if you want to sit over here, Steve. Hi, Anna. How are you? Hi. Sorry about that. No worries. Quickly repeat that again about the grid. Uh, the grid. So on the grid one, you're going to have two dice. Okay. And when you roll those two dice, let's say, for example, I roll two and five. Okay. So I'm going to make a grid system of down two and over five. So that I multiply, have... Multiply, you're multiplying them. Yes, that's correct. So I'm making okay. I'm making an area of, of 10. 10. Of 10, okay. And then at the bottom of that page, that uh, looks like you may have it printed out. Yes. So you're going to make, uh, you're going to write that number uh, yes. sentence. And yeah. the goal is to get as close to covering up all of the 100 uh, grid as you can. Okay, it's clear. It's clear. Sorry, I all forgot. Right, I awesome. missed about two dice. Yeah. No, Great. thanks for thanks for asking that. That's that's a really good one to reinforce those different connections uh, with multiplication, and that's going to support with other standards for geometry for area later on. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, cool. perfect. I'm going to uh, float around to the different tables. Do you have any other questions? No, I'm fine. Thank you. We're going to come back in about yeah, five minutes, so uh, don't okay. go anywhere. All right. Does anybody want to play board? I'm like, just to clarify, you know, Paul told me. So the first one I got, nine total. So that's correct. 
you have 17, but it's not in your bank. Right. Until That's you choose it. Like, until I say I want to stop. And then you lose your turn. Okay. Then you are your turn stops. Okay. So I'm not going to be free. <laughs> so you're going to bank it. <laughs> and bank my point. Oh my God. So then, okay, so then it's your turn now. So then I bank my 17. I got 49 out of the Yeah, 49. You like these options? Yeah. 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 about this. 
our memorization was left at the depth of knowledge of just memorization. We didn't make connections. We didn't have this flexibility. We didn't really see it visually, did we? No. So when we do that, we're taking the skill and the concept, we're having a deeper level of knowledge. So, hey, with the new standards, we're taking them deeper and giving them more meaning. I asked you, Paul, I'm not picking on you. I said, are you gonna go back home and memorize that? You have that number memorized. Probably not. Most of our kids, basic math facts, they, they lose it because they just repetition memory. I do. I really you do now, right? Yeah, I do. He does now because he made connections. Fourteen. That's awesome, right? So you make these different connections, and that's what—that's the power that we want to do with our kids. It's a little bit slower. It's a little bit different, but it's powerful, correct? So when we have this different depth of knowledge on it, we're pulling from memory and not just memorization. It's a little bit different. So we did a little practice early. So what questions do you have? I'm, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Anna, if you have any questions, let me know. Coming to the Dutch. So, I have a question about like the older oh. grades, the ones that do algebra. Is that applicable here? Or is it in the end? Say that again. I I would have some questions about um, you know, later on for algebra levels. Is that applicable now or that's gonna be probably for our, our, our uh, upper grade coach. We have another uh, parent training coming up. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, yeah, sure thing. I can send you some information on that. Sure. Paul, thank you. Yeah, it, well, it ties back into the common core, so it can do Okay, sure thing. Sure thing. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap up a little bit early, but I'm going to make sure I give credit. Uh, again, here's some resources that I've used. Oh, survey. Let me get to this. I just want to, Christina. Uh, I missed. I mentioned her. And Joe Bowler is a uh, a specialist. She's uh, in California, uh, but great resources. I just want to make sure I mention those tonight. But uh, a lot of this is what I I, I read about and research. Um, but th these are things that I've done firsthand as well, and had good experience with. All right. So let me go back to this. Uh, if you don't mind doing a little survey for us, and I appreciate you being online with us tonight. You guys have a great evening and safe travels. And I'll make sure I get out there and answer some more questions tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And James. Yeah. yeah, if you can just fill out that survey, that would be great. Okay, so how do I do that? Um, here, let me put the link. I can put the link in the chat. Uh huh. Okay, I put, if you want to copy and paste that um, into your browser, it should take you to the survey. If not, you can always uh, take a picture of the QR code and it should bring up the link autom automatically. I need permission. This form can only be viewed by users. Oh, okay. I'll fix that right now. You might get that same error, Paul. Did that work up there? It didn't work. Did you get a one? I just need to make a quick edit, and then you should have access to it. <laughs> All right. Will you do me a favor and try it again and see if it will work? Yep. Worked awesome. Okay. Is that, is that what? Um, mm -hmm. But here I'm going to be partial. Right? So here I have a 
No, it's okay. If you if you just go to that link, then you should be able to access it. Thank you for trying. Okay. All right. Is it my turn? Yes. 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 All right, Anna. I don't know if you had any more questions, but um but uh, as to the junior high information, I can, I have, a, we have a training. It's going to be able to be offered virtually as well. Um, okay. but it's, it's math strategies for um, seventh and eighth grade students. Okay. And it's been by our secondary e, uh, math coach, Liz Riddell. Um And that's coming up next Thursday. Okay, great. Same time. Same time, um, and I will be, if you register, just like you register today, if you yeah. register for that, that junior high one, we actually are offering to either this Thursday or the 18th, um, okay. but, he, but she will be more focusing on, on that secondary. Okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, and um, if you need to head out, then I think we're, we're basically done here. Okay, great. So I'll finish, I'll finish the review and, um, and yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. There you go. You won! I was such a big risk! Mommy, I'm winning. Seven. Yeah, we're all good. All right. Yeah. I guess. Um, so, yes, I'm not even really sure if I'm going to phrase the question. 